I always find this time of year the perfect time to reflect and regroup and get back on track, or in my case, get on track. Uh, it, mainly because, you know, it's the middle of the year, it feels like we've been going uphill, 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 we've reached our peak and we're kind of winding down, a long way down to the end of the year, but also because it's my birthday in like three days. And as another year passes, it's interesting to evaluate where I'm at, where I thought I'd be at, at this age. Um, and you know, no pressure, but just to at least have a good think about where I'm going and what I'm doing. Because uh, honestly, I have been floating a bit recently. I have gone from someone that plans everything to a T to barely planning anything at all this year. Um, just kind of went into this year with very little in the way of big goals, uh, which is fine. But I do think it's starting to show I'm feeling a bit directionless um functioning day to day you know i can keep meetings and appointments um clinging on to a bit of a video schedule but i am lacking the bigger picture and kind of the the why behind what i'm doing and i have to say being more free with my time hasn't been all bad obviously i'm actually really lucky to be in a career where i have the time and space to do that um just to kind of break out of any habit loops that i might have been in just doing things because that's what i've always done it's left me in a good position to redesign my life I guess a little bit, Re, um, reschedule my days and my weeks, just the structure of everything um, and I don't know, find a better middle ground. Right, so here's the plan. I want to reevaluate and sort out my planning system to something that works a lot better for me and establish some goals for now to the end of the year and potentially onwards. Then I would like to review my brain dump of my, of my current tasks that I've noted down and see if there's anything on there that I can tick off. Uh, maybe tackle one of the bigger projects. Um, I'm thinking of doing the bathroom. I wanted to give the bathroom a bit of a facelift. I've got all or most of the things in order to be able to start that. And I think that would be quite a rewarding big task to tackle from my massive brain dump of all the bits and bobs that I've wanted to do all year and since before the start of the year. Uh, then I would really like to, and this is the main thing, I really want to dedicate more time to the kind of work that I want to be doing day to day. So really spending time fitting creative work into my schedule um, and also time to study, um, study artists, study uh, pieces of work and really work on my art, work my art a lot more, all of that while juggling that with my regular work and seeing if I can shift that balance to be a bit more creative but also keep in uh, regular work hours. Um, so <laughs> let's figure out what we're doing first things first. Now this has been my planning system for the past year. Uh, it actually dates back to last June. Wow, um, there's stuff in here from before we'd moved out just seeing if it would even be financially viable. There's all the records of my first orders of the mini zines and then countless, countless to-do lists um, and all the like day-to-day -day scraps and bits and bobs. So I love this notebook, it's allowed me to brain dump, just get everything down on paper. It's simple, it's messy, but it really doesn't allow much room for long-term planning or planning things that you refer back to. Speaking of long-term planning, I kind of need one. Nothing too specific, nothing set in stone, but it'd be nice to have some big goals, something to work back from. So I'm gonna brainstorm some of the things that I think are most important for me and what I would want for future me. Now, if you're doing this with me, now would be a great time to look back at your year so far, what you've wanted, what you've done. Now that at the moment for me is arbitrary, I know where I'm at, I appreciate everything that past me has done so far this year and I will not begrudge any waste of time because honestly, I did enough. Um, I'm just hoping to look forward now and um, get on with the rest of the year. So that's what we're doing. I'm thinking about what I want for the next six months and beyond. You could put time limits on this, like five year plans, but I already have a broad idea of the direction I want to be going in, a few of my big goals. So I'm just going to kind of family tree this, trickle down from the big goals and see if I can work it into some actionable steps. Now YouTube for me is an interesting one. Uh, if I'm being completely honest, it's not really a priority for me anymore. I've made the mistake in the past of giving it a lot more time than I think I should have, just out of habit. But I'm starting to think now about the amount of time that I'm putting into it and where that might be a bit more rewarding for me in a way that I can still get to enjoy doing this because I do enjoy it, um, just more when it's not a job, not a task that I feel like I have to do and it's something that I'm doing for fun and then transfer that like work time into creating art which is what I want to do really as my career. So that Paint With Me series I love, I love how casual it is, I love just being able to do what I would normally be doing and also be able to keep that connection with you guys and get to talk to you guys um, and almost have almost like a painting club where we're just hanging out and um, 
making art together and I hope to keep that up and maybe expand on it and make that one of the main pieces of content. Um, as well as videos like this because I really love uh, working through my ideas on film, nothing helps me get get it really um, fleshed out and figured out, uh, like making a video out of a topic that I'm focused on at the time. So that helps a lot. I've actually figured out goals that I didn't even know that I had. So now I need to figure out a system where I can keep track of what I want um, and how I'm making progress and just making sure that I am working towards these things. So I'm thinking the only other planning system that I've been able to keep up with has been using Google Calendar. I love Google Calendar, I use it for things like um, keeping track of meetings, appointments, um, social events, I use it to track Ozzy's schedule as well just so I know where he is. Um, and I like the flexibility of it, I like being able to move things around, kind of group things together, uh, colour code things as well, I have like different calendars for different things. Plus I like that I can access everything um, wherever I am as long as I have an internet connection. So. I'm thinking all my long-term planning can go in Google Calendar. I might really start using that sidebar, like the task section, um, which also works really well because I use Google Keep and that is stored there at the side as well. So I think it would be a good place to have all my bigger goals um, and have those kind of stacked there at the side to look at whenever I'm planning my week or my month, just there as a reminder of what I'm aiming towards. Now I'm broadly mapping out the rest of the year with like a goal or deadline for each month, um, something that ties back into the flowchart that I did earlier. Just giving myself somewhere to work back from and letting myself dream big. So I've written that I would like to write a short story by the end of the year. Um, just kind of discovered slash admitted that to myself. It's a big goal um, and big goals are scary. So I think that's been kind of hidden down there, but it's something that I really want to do. And having that little brainstorm really brought that to the forefront of what my priorities will be for the rest of this year. But that means I need to think about, you know, when am I going to start it to have it finished by the end of the year. Also, don't expect to see anything about this short story. Um, I just want to keep it to myself, probably. Uh, we'll see. But, you know, I want to be able to give myself room to make mistakes and not have a pressure of sharing it with anyone. So it's still quite broad. I've put in here that I want to have some postcards made up by the end of September and I could get really specific with it and think about, you know, when I'm going to plan it, when I'm going to actually make the art, uh, when I'm going to send things to the printer and when I want them printed by. But I want to keep things open. I can see that it's there now. It will always be there at the side of my calendar when I'm planning my weeks. So when I'm thinking about what I'm going to do that week, I'm, you know, on my days that are dedicated to doing artwork I could be thinking about um, working on the designs for those postcards on my more admin days I could be looking into printers stuff like that so it's always there as a reminder of what kind of direction I should be going in when I'm looking at what I'm doing for the week and I mean we'll see if this level of flexibility works you guys will be with me on this journey and if anything changes either in my goals or in my planning system I will keep you updated now for weekly planning I will stick to this notebook, um, same for my day to day, but I am down to the last few pages in here. So I'm going to pick up another one. Um, it's exactly identical, but for now I will keep this one just in case there are things that I want to refer back to. And eventually I'll take pictures of specific spreads and move those onto Trello. Um, probably won't ever want to refer back to anything, but it's nice to know that those are still there. <laughs> Now's a great opportunity to consolidate all of those unfinished tasks from throughout the book, go through my old brain dump, see what's not important anymore, and transfer it all over. And I'm going to leave extra pages for brain dumping at the beginning of the book so that it can be a running list that I just come back to. Wow, so that's it. It's really refreshing to have an idea now of what I'm going to be getting on with past just what I'm doing tomorrow, which is how I've been living. So now that everything has been planned, it's time for the fun part. I'm actually going to do something. So I've pretty much decided already that the project that I'm going to tackle this week will be the bathroom. I just think it'll be really satisfying. It's quite dark and dingy in there, um, just needs a little paint. I'm not going to do anything major. I'm actually not allowed to paint in there, but I think I'm doing the landlord a favour. But yeah, I think all those few little tasks that will go into it will be really satisfying to get done. So I'm going to have a kind of three-pronged approach to it. Starting today with cleaning, cleaning the whole space, prepping it for painting, and repairing anything that needs repairing 
tomorrow will be when I paint and also I want to recork uh, a few of the areas where the cork is coming up and then finally it will be day three and I will do some decorating, get some new furniture in there, maybe some new storage um, and just dress it and make it look nice. So that means today it's time to clean. <laughs> Bathroom. He actually does all of it um, except the toilet. He finds the toilet gross, so if that's my job, which I'm fine with as long as he does everything else. Uh, but he's not here. He's not here um, from this Wednesday till next Monday. He's at Glastonbury. Uh, he's never missed one, never missed a Glastonbury. Uh, I think his first one he was in the womb, so <laughs> I wasn't going to stop him from going. Um, I hope he's out there having fun. But in the meantime, I've kind of been looking forward to this because it means I get a chance to establish a routine independent of his because I quite often find myself accounting for his time within mine just because his schedule changes so much. It's quite rare for us to be able to have time together. So I will quite often prioritize time with him over the things that I have to do and then shape my schedule around that. So I'm hoping to have this few days to establish my own routine and then kind of slot him back into it when he gets back. Okay, bathroom step one, done. Now the final thing for me to do planning wise today is figure out what meals I'm going to be making for the rest of the week. Uh, something that I'm trying to get better at just planning ahead and making sure that I'm using up the things that we have that are going out of date so that we're wasting less food and also so that I can be a bit more creative with the meals I make and get better at cooking because it's not something that I'm particularly <laughs> great at. So it mainly looks like we've got a lot of veg. We actually get a veg subscription box um, called Oddbox, which is really, really good. Um, they do a lot of like the waste from shops and just making sure that that chain of waste is cut short. I think they're only London based at the moment, but if you are based in London, then it sounds interesting to you. This isn't sponsored whatsoever. They have no idea that I'm talking about them. It's just something that we're quite, we're quite into at the moment. Um, you know, you get a lot of veg that you wouldn't normally try. Uh, the main reason we went for it for us was that most of our plastic waste comes from supermarket veg and with Oddbox occasionally things will be wrapped in plastic because they would rather send you stuff wrapped in plastic than have it go in the bin but uh, most of the time they try to opt for things with no plastic which is so refreshing it's so nice to not have so much plastic coming in and out of the house and as I said it's really nice to try a few different things here and there uh, we get it every other week and we get the fruit and veg box um, and if you're interested if you are interested if you are based in London um, I think they give you like they give everyone, and this is again not sponsored, they give everyone a referral code and I think, um, if I can give you a code or something I'll let you know, um, but I think that you can get £5 off because I got £5 off my first box and that was, it was good when you're feeling it out. But yeah, that's left us with quite a bit of veg to get through, well I say us, it's left me with quite a lot of veg to get through um, and my usual thing with that I will go for a curry, um, I'll also probably do like a nice chunky salad as well one day. And then for the rest of the week it's quite simple just because Obviously it's my birthday on Saturday, so that weekend is a bit up in the air. I know I'm gonna have dinner at my sister's one day, um, probably have dinner with my mum another day, and then uh, I'm assuming I'll go out one day, not 100% sure yet. I'm really realizing that I'm just not a birthday person. Like this week, the lead up to my birthday has been nothing but anxiety, just feeling this pressure of organizing something or just doing something. Um, like people asking me what I'm doing for my birthday and I don't wanna say that I'm doing nothing, but I also, just kind of want to do nothing. So we'll see if I end up doing something. On the day, I might feel like seeing people, um, but I'm leaving it open. But I do have uh, my backup meal of like an oven pizza to go for if I do end up staying in. Close your eyes. Get some rest. I'm by your side. Lay your head on my chest. Good 
goals for this week. I really want to spend more time on my art and a huge part of that is studying the work of artists that I admire and seeing if there's anything that I can take from that um, and transfer into my own work. I'm really learning that I need to respect that, that time to my work um, and dedicate more time to it. So I want days where there is no work work where I can dedicate a whole day to art related things without feeling like I could be being more productive which is why I wanted to get everything done yesterday just so that today um, could be a more art focused day. I find it easier to focus when like tasks are batched. So have work specific days, art specific days. Today is a study day. I'm actually looking at Studio Ghibli and their techniques. And then tomorrow I'm gonna see if I can um, take anything that I've learned and transfer that into any personal work that I wanna get on with. Um, I'm also gonna be juggling the bathroom painting portion today. Uh, so it's gonna be a fun one, I think. So let's get on with it. One more night, one more night I could fight it through Till the darkness turns to light One more night, one more night
way, or should it be that way? It's looking really good in here. I'm really, really liking it. Um, just had to cork, which I didn't get a chance to do yesterday, but I did kind of go over a lot of areas with white gloss paint, and I think that part of that has lessened how much that I thought I was going to need to cork. It just has neatened things up a bit to where I don't think I need to have that extra layer. Um, but I wanted to talk today a little bit about the kind of inspiration behind this scheme. Um, I saw this picture on Pinterest of a restaurant that I think is in Lisbon. So they've got like that dark grey floor like we have in here. Uh, the walls are a lovely kind of muted sage colour. Um, and then they have a lot of wood, that kind of cognac -y colour of the seat. And then the highlights of like a, a bit of black, um, a bit of gold. So that's what I was thinking of going with um, as I went into this. But I couldn't find that paint colour within my price bracket. I wanted to go for like the own brand of the shop's paint. Um, so I got this colour and white to mix with it to see if I could potentially lighten it up to somewhat match that nice light sage colour. But when I brought this paint home, Ozzy said he really liked it in this shade. And it made me think that maybe it would work better left on its own and kind of embrace the darkness of this room um, instead of trying to brighten it up with a lighter colour. Just kind of embrace that kind of moodiness but make it a bit more punchy. Um, so yeah, I went in with the first coat with it on its own um, and I was thinking if I don't like it then I will lighten it up for the second coat. But I really, really liked it. It actually went on lighter and then dried darker and when it was lighter I wasn't that keen on it. So I'm very glad that I decided to go with it in its original colouring. And then other than that, I just have this cabinet here from Amazon. I have a few decorative bits from H&M Home, uh, from Sainsbury's and a couple of bits from Amazon as well. And a couple of things from B&Q, like a new toilet seat and a bin. So I will be spending the next uh, half hour or so getting all that stuff in here, um, putting the finishing touches on. And then our three day bathroom rejuvenation plan <laughs> will be complete. So hard to see. painting, uh, just kind of transferring over anything that I'd learnt from the Studio Ghibli study uh, into my own personal work. And I did actually pick up on a few things from that study just on its own. Um, that's why I love recreating art that I like because you really get an insight into what the artist uh, was doing at the time and what their process might have been. So there was a lot of broad washes um, and then kind of nuanced with different tones within it, different um, shades of the same colour, um, just kind of mixed in at random. And then on top of that would be a layer of like smaller details which really tied it all together. So I'm really looking forward to trying that kind of technique on my next painting. But it won't be today, uh, this has taken all day pretty much. And I just kind of want to chill now, it's my birthday tomorrow and I've still got a few things to do, I want to paint my nails and tidy the house because I can imagine that at some point we'll probably end up back here. And then I'm gonna head over to my mum's house, have my dinner there. And let's see what is in store for this weekend. So Saturday starts with brunch with Jody and then cocktails. Uh, and then just hope to really enjoy the crazily amazing weather that we're gonna have. Uh, have some fun in the sun, some drinks, some music. And, and then uh, I'm open, I can imagine things progressing into the night, um, in which case we'll probably end up here, as I said. But I'm just looking forward to spending time with friends and having as much fun as I possibly can. But not too much fun, because on Sunday I still have plans to meet with my sister at her new flat. Anyway, for now, that'll be it. Thank you so much for joining me on this fun and tiring journey. Um, let me know if you want to see more videos like this. Um, but other than that, um, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon for the next video. Bye. 
Oh.